Tarsiva has also been approved, and some physicians will also add Tarsiva to Gemzar. Uh, some physicians use a combination of other uh, medications, but it's always Gemzar based. However, the data to support adding that second drug uh, is pretty limited, so that's still a controversial area. Uh, it doesn't appear to add significantly to survival, and so many medical oncologists uh, try to look at the efficacy, they look at the cost, they look at the side effects, and they usually come back to just Gemzar as a single agent or perhaps with Tarsiva. That varies from office to office. But uh, we do know that uh, Gemzar is better than nothing for some patients, but however, it's not made a huge impact upon survival. I think there are certainly some patients whose life is prolonged with uh, single agent uh, Gemzar. Uh, it does uh, appear to improve uh, quality of life as well, which is why it was improved. But yet it, uh, we certainly need new options for therapy for this uh, devastating disease. Uh, how long does Gemzar help a patient? It varies from person to person. Some it doesn't help at all. Some perhaps the benefit might be there for a few months. But again, if you look at the overall uh, record of these patients, uh, less than 10% of people are alive two years after the diagnosis. Uh, the majority of people have died within a year. Two patients that we have treated thus far with PAM4 uh, both entered with a good performance status, which is part of the entry criteria. Both had uh, the very uh, easily measured disease, which again, we want to be certain that we can measure whether or not we're doing the patient any good. And both were enthusiastic about participating in some type of trial because they'd done their homework. They'd gotten on the internet, uh, they had seen physicians at other institutions, and they all knew the prognosis uh, was grim. And so they were just uh, very enthusiastic about being on something that might offer uh, additional benefit. So we can begin uh, with our first two patients uh, that we treated that we have had time to follow with what I would consider to be ideal candidates. Folks are still feeling good, they're eating well, their nutritional status is good. We have seen, uh, in a short period of time, following treatment, of what I would consider to be uh, dramatic responses to treatment. Uh, one gentleman had an extremely elevated CE19, uh, which dropped almost to normal. His PET scan uh, resolved the hypermetabolic activity. That was quite encouraging. Yet the patient did not have an elevated marker, but did have a very solid uh, radiographic evidence of uh, reduction in the amount of tumor present. The thing that I was quite pleased with uh, was the fact that we did not see any subjective toxicity while the patients were undergoing treatment. Uh, I was concerned that we might see significant myelosuppression. I was concerned that we might have gastrointestinal complaints. Uh, both patients just literally breezed through therapy and had absolutely no complaints at all. We had very minor uh, thrombocytopenia, didn't have any significant neutropenia. Uh, so we were just uh, thrilled with the fact that they tolerated therapy and uh, as far as we, we know uh, with the follow-up, which is limited, that we have now, we're not seeing any delayed toxicity. So we're quite interested in continuing uh, this study and we're trying to accrue as many patients as we can to uh, further examine uh, the uh, duration of remission that will be obtained um, and just to get more data uh, available. Because because we've just seen uh, with a very low dose of uh, Gemzar, uh, extremely uh, impressive results. The uh, significance of uh, a response on a PET scan is uh, a bit hard to say at this point in time when it comes to cancer of the pancreas. Now, if we can extrapolate from other diseases uh, for which we've had quite a bit of experience, actually years of experience for lymphoma patients, we know that those people with just tumors, those people with lymphomas, uh, who do respond dramatically uh, with a normal PET scan after two or three cycles of therapy, uh, those patients do very well. And we know that in lymphomas, there's a higher cure rate. We also have some evidence that uh, PET scan, uh, we also have some evidence that PET scan negativity uh, a PET scan going from extremely hypermetabolic to negative is also predictive of uh, a good response to chemotherapy in patients with gastrointestinal malignancies. We know that the prognosis is much better. We're hoping the same thing is true with patients 
do have cancer of the pancreas. We really don't have any reason to believe that the mechanism of a PET scan going from positive to negative would be different, although that theoretically is, is po possible. But it's, uh, it's encouraging me because it's very hard to measure a benefit with chemotherapy in cancer patients whose primary is a pancreatic malignancy because we know there's not often a good correlation between resist criteria and the benefit with uh, treatment for metastatic cancer of the pancreas. It's a bit of a unique disease in that regard, and so we're hoping that uh, the PET scans will give us a better indicator of how effective a treatment is than just relying upon CT scans, uh, which are notoriously uh, difficult to interpret. The question that comes up uh, next is what happens to patients who have a very good response? Let's say they have an excellent remission. They're doing well. They're asymptomatic. We're not certain that we're going to cure these people. And in fact, anybody who talks about cure at this, viewpoint, at this point in time, I, I think, uh, would be risking their credibility. So the question comes up, A, should you continue a person on Gemsar, perhaps full dose Gemsar. Uh, another alternative which we've chosen would simply be to follow these patients and then at signs of disease recurrence, evidence of disease recurrence, resume treatment. And then the question comes up, what treatment? Would you simply go to traditional single agent Gemsar at the usual dose of 800 to 1,000 milligram per meter squared? Um, I personally would be in favor of reinstituting uh, treatment with PAM4 as long as uh, we don't have problems with the dosimetry and marrow toxicity. Again, this is, uh, as a farm boy, this is on an unplowed field, and we're interested in approaching that. And my personal preference at this time is to simply follow these folks, see how well they do, and then at this time of disease recurrence, if uh, marrow toxicity is not excessive from prior treatments, if we think we've got a window of opportunity here, uh, resume treatment with the same uh, combination of yttrium and gemsar as before.